What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, November 20th, 2015, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Former Subway pitchman Jared Fogel was sentenced to more than 15 years in prison after pleading guilty to child pornography and sex charges. Fogel, who's 38, pleaded guilty to one count each of receipt of child pornography and traveling to engage in illicit sexual conduct with a minor as part of a deal worked out with prosecutors in August. In exchange, Fogel, who became the restaurant's spokesman after he famously lost weight exclusively eating Subway sandwiches, promised not to seek a sentence of less than five years in prison, and prosecutors agreed to recommend a sentence of no more than 12 and a half years. Ultimately, the judge had the final say on the sentence, handing down the 15 years, eight-month sentence. Fogel could have been sentenced up to 50 years in prison on the two counts. In the hours before the sentencing, forensic psychiatrist Dr. John Bradford testified Fogel is hypersexual, a mild uh, pedophiliac, and an alcoholic. Bradford said Fogel admitted to paying a minimum of $12,000 a year for sex, including to have sex with the 16 and 17-year-old children. Bradford said his main interest was in young females and some interest in adolescent males. Bradford said Fogel had a compulsive eating disorder before his 245-pound weight loss from the Subway diet. After losing the pounds, he developed compulsive hypersexuality disorder. He said he certainly engaged in sex over a significant period of time. He engaged in that extensively when he was working for the Subway Corporation. Khloe Kardashian bit back against online critics Wednesday night after a tweet about boyfriend James Harden prompted backlash. To Netsons, who slammed Kardashians for allegedly going against her vows to a strange husband, Lamar Odom, the strong looks better naked author shot back by saying, you should have said those to the man who went against all our, our vows. Judge yourself. She said in another reply, E! News reports, divorce is still going forward. Doesn't mean I won't be there through sickness and health. I've proven that. The Keeping Up With The Kardashians personality blame antibiotics plus painkillers for her Twitter outburst, saying adding to Twitter the mix does not equal anything good. Kardashian canceled several dates of her book tour this week due to her contracting a strophe infection. She wrote Wednesday, Dolls, sorry, so sorry, I need to reschedule my book signing. I'm sick and doctor's orders are that I need to lay low until we narrow down what's wrong. During an interview on Tuesday, airing Thursday morning, uh, Kardashian detailed the early stages of Odom's emergency hospital stay, revealing she was she was told he only had hours to live. She, she said, it's a horrible call to get getting to the hospital and knowing he's in a coma and having to run these tests or making these medical decisions. It's terrifying. The 31-year-old celebrity spent the last several weeks by Odom's side after he was found unconscious in the Las Vegas brothel and hospitalized in October. The couple temporarily called off their divorce following the incident. Meanwhile, Kardashian maintains her relationship with current boyfriend, Houston Rockets star James Harden. In a related story, Kim Kardashian West says her family is still processing Kourtney Kardashian's split from Scott Disick. The 35-year-old reality star opened up about her 36-year-old sister's breakup in an interview with E! News published Thursday. Kourtney Kardashian and Disick split in July after the 32-year-old club promoter was spotted cozying up to his ex-girlfriend. Kardashian said, it's a hard adjustment. There's a lot that goes into it. And I think as a sister, all you can do is be really supportive. You know, we love Scott too. He's family. So that makes it hard for everyone, even though you might not agree with someone's actions. She also added, um, you just have to be supportive of a family member and you see every up and down and that's just who we've always been. Adding uh, uh, of the, She added on the reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians, we've shared so much of, and Courtney has been so open with sharing her life. Courtney Kardashian and Disick were together for nine years and share five-year-old son Mason, three-year-old daughter Penelope, and 11-year-old son Rain. The couple were seen together for the first time since their breakup Saturday, days after Disick left rehab. A source told Us Weekly, Scott has apologized to everyone as part of his treatment. He's also been going to the rehab center every day and spends a lot of time with his sober companion. He is really committed to this. He wants to be there for his family. Kardashian and her family returned this week on Keeping Up with the Kardashian, Season 11, which which airs Sundays at 9 p.m. on 
E. The reality star recently discussed her high-risk pregnancy, but said daughter North is excited to meet her baby brother. Younger sister Kylie Jenner isn't keen on letting sister Kim Kardashian West and and brother-in-law Kanye West stay in her Calabasas mansion. During a teaser for an upcoming Keeping Up With The Kardashians episode, Jenner seen scoffing at the idea of allowing her family members to live with her while their house is being remodeled. Kardashian said during the on-camera interview, Kanye and I are in the final stages of our construction of our home, and they advised us that we should move out so they can do our bedroom and our bathrooms now. She then asked Mother Kris Jenner if the couple can temporary room with her and is rejected. Kardashian suggests maybe we can move into Kylie's new place for like a little bit. Jenner responds, I would seriously stab myself. Nobody's staying in my house. Kardashian is expecting to give birth to her second child in December. Kardashian says, we talk about baby brother all the time. North, so sweet. And yesterday she said, mommy, can I give baby brother a kiss on your tummy? And she kissed my stomach. Kardashian West welcomed North in June 2013 and married in May 2014. While Josh Jugger remains in rehab following his infidelity scandal, adult film star Danica Dillon is suing the former reality star for sexual assault. In a court document obtained by People magazine Wednesday, Dillon is seeking $500,000 claim that Duggar assaulted her to the point of causing her physical and emotional injuries. Dillon, real name Ashley Stamp Nordup, alleges that Duggar approached her at a Philadelphia strip club back in March where the 27-year-old paid her for lap dances and later for sex. Dillon alleges that during the time Duggar manhandled handled her to where she felt as if she was being raped. The pair met up again a month later and Dylan alleges that Duggar treated her roughly again. In September, Dylan opened up about the incident to Entertainment Tonight where she acknowledged that she never told him no and consented to the sex. A rep for the Duggar family told Us Weekly, we do not have a statement at this time. Back in August, Duggar admitted to cheating on his wife Anna Duggar after it was discovered that he had an account on extramarital affair site Ashley Madison. The cheating scandal came just three months after he convinced to molesting five girls, including his sister Jill and Jessa Duggard as a teenager. In October, Josh wrapped up his second month of rehab while Anna was reportedly doing well and staying strong while caring for the couple's four children. Anna and Josh Duggar have been married since 2008. Agent Carter released a new promo starring Haley Atwell on Wednesday. The 33-year-old British actress returns as Peggy Carter with Enver Gulk Lodge as Agent Daniel Souza and James Darcy as Howard Starks, played by Dominic Cooper's butler, Edwin Jarvis. The previous Agent Carter traveled to Hollywood for action, romance, and adventure. Devious Maids actor Reggie Miller appears as Jason Wilkes. Peggy's potential love interest. Chad Michael Murray also returns as Agent da- Jack Thompson with Wynn Everett as Whitney Frost, a.k.a. Madame Musquet, Curry Graham as Calvin Chadwick, Frost's husband, and Ken Marino as Joseph Manfredi, M- M- uh, a.k.a. Ba- Blackwing. Agent Carr premieres on ABC on J- in January and will return for a second season January 5th, 2016. The new season will follow the titular secret agent as he deals with atomic threats following World War II. Atwell also portrays the character in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Executive producer Michelle Fakas told Entertainment Weekly in July, We're very much being inspired by noir films. We keep talking about L.A. Confidential and Chinatown, where you're investigating one seemingly isolated crime and unveils a huge web of conspiracy. Actor Tate Diggs came under fire recently after he explained how he would want his biracial son to not have to identify as one race over the other. While promoting his latest children's book, Mix Me, about a biracial child learning to accept himself, Diggs spoke to the Girio about the book's message and how his son Walker could learn from it. He says, my son is half black, half white, and just by watching him growing up, listening to other biracial or how you want to term these beautiful people, their experiences, their accounts, what it's like coming from a blended relationship. Mix Me is it's another book of self-love, self-appreciation, and knowing that you're special regardless of what people say about you because people will always say stuff, Diggs said. Diggs then elaborated how he wants Walker, whose mother's actress and singer Indiana Menzel, to not feel any pressure to claim just one race. He said... I think when you do, you risk disrespecting that one half of who you are. I don't want my son to be in a situation where he calls himself black and then everyone thinks he's, he has a black mom and a black dad and then they see he has a white mother. They're wondering what's going on. Are you ashamed of your white? 
Soon after, commentators on social media began blasting the 44-year-old for alleging being ashamed of his own race and thus wanting his son to avoid being labeled black. Diggs fired back on Instagram Wednesday, writing, I'm a proud black man. I want my son to grow up and to be a proud black man if he chooses. He has a mother who is white. He has every right to be just as proud of his mother's blood as well. Please wake up, people. It's not that deep. Back in 2011, Diggs released his first children's book, Chocolate Me, which detailed his younger years growing up in Rochester, New York, and the, and the racial discrimination he experienced from being African-American. 50 Cent has taken to social media to confront former baseball star Derek Jeter over alleged comments he made about the rapper. 50 Cent's real name Curtis Jackson is in the middle of a multi-million dollar lawsuit with the underwear company Frigo, TMZ reports. Originally, the company had asked Jeter to become its spokesman, but when he became unavailable, 50 Cent took his place. In court documents obtained by TMZ, Frigo owner uh, Matthias Ingrid who filed the suit, claims that Jeter backed out, but not before saying 50 Cent was too urban for the brand. 50 Cent then took to Instagram Wednesday to respond to Jeter and his alleged comments. He captioned a photo of Jeter, wow, guess I'm not a Yankees fan anymore. Let's go Mets. Man, you can't trust nobody these days. Scratching my head. The rap mogul made headlines last earlier this month when he took to Instagram again to call out actress Vilka A. Fox for discussing 50's sexuality on Bravo's Watch What Happens Live. Jeter last made headlines with his engagement to Sports Illustrated swimsuit model Hannah Davis back in October. Rachel Weisz says she works to keep her marriage to husband Daniel Craig private. The 45-year-old British-American actress opened up about their relationship with the 37-year-old, 47-year-old actor in the December-January issue of More. Weisz told the magazine her husband's celebrity is too great for her not to protect their marriage from the spotlight. She says he's just too famous. It would be a betrayal. When you're young, you tell your girlfriends everything. One of the great pleasures of not being an adolescent is that you don't have to share everything. When you're married, that door closes. The audience goes, and you're in your life. Weiss and the James Bond actor married in June 2011 and share son Henry and daughter Ella from their respective first marriages. Craig previously discussed the importance of privacy in keeping their personal and professional lives separate with Vulture in 2013. The actor said, We separate entities professionally and we're happy to stay separate entities and we're not a professional couple. We just don't want to be seen in that way. A couple because our relationship is nobody's business but ours. He admitted marriage is hard. Everybody has to work at it and to have it exposed publicly doesn't do any favors. Personally, I'm not interested in other people's relationships and it's usually hearsay. It's usually kind of wrong. Weiss and Craig co-starred in the 2011 movie Dream House and the 2013 Broadway revival Betrayal. The actors is slated for youth with Michael Caine and the light between oceans with Michael Fassbender while Craig last starred in Spectrum. Dakota Johnson and Rebel Wilson will star in the first How to Be a Single trailer released Wednesday. The preview sees a 26-year-old American actress navigate single life after a breakup with the 35-year-old Australian star's help. Mad Men actress Alex, Allison Brie and Funny People star Leslie Mann co-stars Johnson and Wilson's friends. Anders Holm from The Mindy Project, Damon Wayans Jr. from New Girl, and Jake Lacey from The Office portray some potential suitors. And Nicholas Braun from Sky High, Jason McInectus from The League, and Nick Bateman from The Originals also have roles. La Rosie director Christian Ditter helmed the film with actress Drew Barrymore as producer. The movie is based on the Liz Tosilio book of the same name and was adapted by He's Just Not Into You writers Mark Silverstein and Abby Cohn. Johnson is best known for playing Anastasia Steele in Fifty Shades of Grey and is also slated for a big Bigger splash with Ralph Fiennes. Wilson will portray Fat Amy in the Pitch Perfect films and will star in the Brothers Grimsby with Sasha Baron Cohen. Harrison Ford and the team behind Star Wars are partnering with the nonprofit organization Omaze to launch a fundraising campaign with an exciting perk, a chance to meet the cast face-to-face at the premiere of The Force Awakens. Ford, who portrays Han Solo in the film, helped make the announcement via, via, uh, via webcam. The campaign reboot dubbed Star Wars Force of Change aims to support 15 charities nominated by members of the cast and crew. He whispered in the beginning of the compilation video published on StarWars.com, Hey there, I'm Harrison Ford, and I'm here today with some folks from Omaze to surprise some past donors to Star Wars Force of Change with a pretty big announcement. The campaign gives new and past donors an opportunity to be selected for an exclusive trip to the film's premiere in either Los Angeles or London. Winners will also meet the cast and crew of Force Awakens with a group of their friends. 
Uh, J.J. Abrams is quoted by saying, if you were among those who originally donated, thank you. But if you missed out, here's your chance to join us. My part, my favorite part, instead of benefiting just one cause, this time each member of the cast has nominated a cause they're passionate about. Among the causes supported by the campaign and the selected by the likes of Abrams and producer Ka- Catherine, uh, excuse me, Kathleen Kennedy are UNICEF, Malala Fun and Feeding America, the website says. Force of Change ends December 4th, just before midnight. Joseph Gordon Lovett's collaboration with Seth Rogen for the Christmas comedy The Night Before was fueled by regular smoke sessions. The actor appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live Wednesday night to discuss his work with Rogen, saying the creative process was helped along with the help of marijuana. Gordon Lovett said, We're all throwing ideas in at the last minute, and there's definitely a joint being passed around the room early in the day. He felt the alternative approach to work could be a great idea for him, but later admitted it was more beneficial to take part in a smoke session much later. Um, He joked, I decided to start smoking at the end of the day after the work was done, after noting his comic suggestions were only funny to him. Smoke at the end of the day, kids, then enjoy your weed. Gordon Lovett, who earlier this year starred in the tightrope thread of The Walk, attended the red carpet premiere of the night before in Los Angeles Wednesday night alongside Rogan, Anthony Mackie, James Franco, Tom Rothman, and Jillian Bell, among others. Gordon Lovett said at the event of the new holiday flick, according to Hollywood Reporter, it really walks the balance between being ridiculous and entertaining and also being about human beings that you can't care about. Alexandra Daddario has joined the cast of Baywatch. The 29-year-old actress will star alongside San Andreas co-star Dwayne Johnson and high school musical actor Zac Efron in the forthcoming film. Daddario confirmed the news Wednesday on Twitter, writing, Extremely excited, been practicing my slow-mo run all morning. Johnson had announced Daddario's casting earlier in the day, writing, It's official, want to welcome the talented and gorgeous at Alexandra Daddario to the cast of Hashtag Baywatch for this role of summer. Alex is one of a kind woman I know from experience and can't wait for you guys to see her own the role. Nicole Egger originated the role of Summer Quinn on Baywatch in the 1990s. The action drama ran from 1989 to 1990 on NBC and aired in syndication from 1991 to 2001. The show was renamed Baywatch Hawaii for its 1999 to 2001 season. Baywatch co-stars David Hasselhoff, Pamela Anderson, and Erica Eleniak as Los Angeles County lifeguards and has been long rumored for a movie adaptation. Horrible Bosses director Seth Gordon will helm the film, which is slated for release in 2016 or 2017. The Daryl won fame as Laurie Lewis on All My Children and is known for playing Annabeth Chase in the Percy Jackson movies. She has since appeared on White Collar, Parenthood, and True Detective, and guest starred on American Horror Story Hotel. Jenny McCarthy had repeated guest stints as Charlie Sheen's love interest on CBS's Two and a Half Men, and rather than offering him support after his HIV reveal, she had blasted the actor for not disclosing his diagnosis sooner. She said on her Cyrus XM radio show Wednesday, Now being on Two and a Half Men myself, I feel like in playing a love interest, you would think there would be some kind, some type of, I don't want to say criminal inch issues, but I don't even know how to feel about that. The very sexy, funny host explained to listeners that in the TV world, stars not only have to sign a piece of paper that says, do you have core sores, but they also have to show their medication. Uh, she marveled about the 50-year-old sitcom star. If I have to be upfront about a herb, how could you not be upfront about HIV? I look back and I'm like, okay, that would have been some valuable information. I mean, look how many people have played his love interest on the show. The, the radio host went on to say that she is STD-phobic and makes her sexual partner sign a waiver to state that they are clean. Despite her harsh words, McCarthy did offer her some goodwill for Sheen. She continued by saying, I have sympathy for him because he's sick and it's awful, but man, he's going to have to take major accountability for many people in his life. Notorious Hollywood Playboy Sheen went on public with his health condition in an interview with Matt Lauer on NBC's Today on Tuesday, saying that HIV is a hard three letters to absorb. It's a turning point in one's life. Sheen's marriage to Brooke Mueller ended in 2011, the same year as his, his diagnosis, as well as a very public meltdown that led to his departure from the hit CB, CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men. On Tuesday, he says his diagnosis led to a downward spiral in his attitude and behavior. He said, I was so desperate by the position I was in. I was doing a lot of drugs. I was drinking way too much, and I was making really bad decisions. My Little Pony, the movie, is slated for release in 2017. Hasbro and Lionsgate announced the news Wednesday, which was later confirmed on the My Little Pony 
Facebook page. Uh, it read, The Magic of Friendship is Coming to the Big Screen with the My Little Pony movie on November 3rd, 2017. Hashtag MLP. My Little Pony, Friendship of, is Magic, writer and producer Megan McCarthy penned the script with series director Jason Thiessen in the helm for the film. McCarthy was named the head of storytelling for Hasbro's Girls Brands in June. The movie will follow ponies Twilight Sparkle, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, and Rarity as they attempt to save their home. Kristen Chenoweth, Tara Strong, Kathy Westluck, Andrea Lieben, Tabitha St. German, and Ashley Bell will provide voices. My Little Pony began as a toy line in 1983, which continues to earn $650 million annually. Film and TV adaptations follow in the, in the late 1980s, and the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic series has aired on the Hub channel since 2010. Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett united once again for a holiday-themed duet in Barnes & Noble's latest TV spot. The duo, who last year collaborated on the award-winning album Cheek to Cheek, appeared in separate aisles inside a festive uh, bookstore, singing alongside to the same song, Baby It's Cold Outside. After picking out their selections from the shelves, Gaga and Al met at the end of the aisle, instantly recognizing each other as old friends. The ad reads, you'll never know who you'll meet at Barnes & Noble's. Gaga performed the rendition of Baby It's Cold Outside during the Lady Gaga and the Muppets holiday Day Spectacular in 2013, flipping the script with actor Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Willie Nelson became the first country sh singer to receive the Gershwin Prize for Popular Song from the Library of Congress Wednesday. The famed Texan follows past recipients Paul Simon, Stevie Wonder, Paul McCartney, and Billy Joel. Nelson, A2, was celebrated for his decade-long career and musical contribution to American culture at the library's Thomas Jefferson Building. The event, including a concert, was recorded and will air live on PBS in January, the library announced. Nelson said to the attendees before, um, before announcing a newly completed project, it is a great honor to be receiving the Gershwin Award. I have been a fan of Iron George Gershwin's music since I was a little guy in appreciation for the award, and I've also wanted to make some great music. I've just recorded a complete Gershwin album. It's called Summertime. Li Librarian of Congress James Billington said in July statement, Willie Nelson is a musical explorer redrawing the boundaries of country music through his career. Master communicated the sincerity and universally appealing message of his lyrics placed him in a category of his own while still remaining grounded in his country music Roots. He has helped make country music one of the most universally beloved forms of American artistic expression. Nelson is renowned as one of the most influential country singers of all time, having spent around 60 years producing music, including over 200 albums and earning seven Grammy Awards. In 1990, the singer was honored with the Grammy Living Legend Award. In 2001, he was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Justin Bieber returned to The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon Thursday and renewed his bromance with the NBC Late Night host. Encountering each other in the hallway of 30 Rockefeller Plaza, the two began an elaborate and ever more hilarious secret handshake. What starts with a fairly normal shoulder bump with some hand motions escalated into a game of patty cake, followed by buzzing sounds, pantomime bits, syncopated fat, fake vomiting, and one-legged hopping. The routine ends with a hug and a butt tap and the What Do You Mean singer wishing Fallon happy holidays, man. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1955, Bo Diddley make his, makes his national television debut on The Ed Sullivan Show. Uh, Boner Elias McDaniel in Macomb, Mississippi in 1928, the man better known as Bo Diddley, introduced himself and his namesake beat to the world on this date in 1955 with his television debut on The Ed Sullivan Show. Bo Diddley opened his appearance on Ed Sullivan with the eponymously titled song Bo Diddley. This now famous number set portions of the children's rhyme Mockingbird to what is now known as the Bo Diddley beat, a, syn a syncopated rhythm in 4 4 time and is the foundation of such rock and roll classics as Buddy Holly's Not Fade Away and The Strange Love. I Want Candy, among other countless others. Five months later, before Elvis Presley would make his famous Ed Sullivan debut, Dilly's performance gave many Americans their first exposure to rock and roll, though that term was not yet familiar to mainstream audiences. Neither was the Bo Diddley beat, yet within a, just a few seconds of the drum and maraca opening of Bo Diddley, the live Ed Sullivan audience can be heard spontaneously clapping along the distinctive rhythm in the surviving kinescope recording of the performance. As Dilly would later tell the story, Ed Sullivan had expected him to perform only a cover version of Tennessee and Ernie Ford's 16 Tons and was furious enough with him for opening with Bo Diddley that Sullivan banned him from his future appearances on the show. 
But that as it may, Daly's appearance on this day in 1955 introduced a sound that would influence generation of followers. As blue rock guitarist George Thorogood, who performed and recorded many Bo Daly covers during his career, once told Rolling Stone, Chuck Berry's Maybelline is a country song sped up. Johnny B. Good, Johnny B. Good is blue sped up. But you listen to Bo, Little, Bo Diddley and you say, what in the Jesus is that? Also on this date in 2003, Phil Spector, the influential eccentric music producer who worked with a long list of performers, including the Righteous Brothers, the Ronettes, Ike and Tina Turner, John Lennon, and the Ramones, is indicted in the murder of actress Lana Clarkson. Spector pleads not guilty to the charges. The four-year-old Clarkson was found dead from a single gunshot wound to the mouth in the foyer of Spectre's Al Habrama, California mansion in the early hours of February 3, 2003. Clarkson, who appeared in a string of B-movies such as Barbarian Queen 2, The Empress Strikes Back, met Spectre earlier that same night at the House of Blues in West Hollywood, where she worked as a hostess and subsequently returned with him to his home. Police responded to a 911 call and found Clarkson's body. Uh, Spectre's limo driver, who was waiting outside in the car at the time of Clarkson's death, testified that the music producer came outside with the gun in his hand and told him, I think I killed somebody. However, Spectre later stated that the actress's death was an accidental suicide. Besides having an enormous success as a songwriter and producer and pioneer of a production technique known as the wall of sound, he also developed a reputation as an eccentric with a bad temper and a fascination with guns. By the time of Clarkson's death, Spectre lived in a largely recusive existence. Following Spectre's indictment on second-degree murder charges, his cases experienced a series of delays before opening statements finally began on April 25, 2007. During the high-profile trial, defense attorneys argued that at the time Clarkson's death, the tall, blonde actress was depressed over the state of her failing career and troubled personal life and therefore killed herself. The prosecution, in turn, however, put several female witnesses on the stand who testified about Spectre's history of violence towards women. Throughout the trial, Spectre appeared in court sporting flamboyant outfits and an array of dramatic hairstyles. He has also worked his way through a series of well-defense lawyers over the course of his legal troubles, including O.J. Simpson's attorney, Robert Shapiro, the Menendez brothers' lawyer, Leslie Abramson, and the former John Gotti counselor, Bruce Cutler. Closing arguments in Spectre's trial was made on September 7, 2007. On September 26, the jury announced it was deadlocked, voting 10 to 2 in favor of conviction and unable to reach a verdict, and the judge declared a mistrial. However, a retrial began in October 2008 and April 2009. Spectre was convicted of second-degree murder. He was sentenced to 19 years to life in prison in May 2009. Spectre uh, was 69 years old at the, at the time of sentencing and would be eligible for parole at the age of 88. And that is your entertainment report for Friday, November 20th, 2015. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter Report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the entertainment report and it'll take you to the page everyone have a great weekend good night and god bless you all